Hey guys, welcome back to Trendy Gadget. Today we'll talk about why the Apple M1X will be better than the M2 chip. Let's head into it. Silicon Generations The M2 was recently reported by Nikkei, and Bloomberg previously reported on the M1X, which are the chipsets that all of us nerds have been waiting for to power the higher-end MacBook Pro, Mac Mini, iMac, and the eventual Mac Pro and redesigned MacBook Air that we've been waiting for. However, the terms M2 and M1X are being bandied around. I believe it will be extremely helpful, if not downright convenient, to simply explain what they mean. So traditionally, Apple has iterated on its silicon in two ways. The first is the process of generation, A11 and A12. The figures continue to rise. The other choice is to extend, A12X and A12Z are two different types of A12X and A12Z. It is close to release. We are very sure that we will see a release of the new MacBook Pro M1X in July time. Every year on the year, Apple has increased those figures, moving to other stuff, such as custom CPUs and custom GPUs, neural engines, and machine learning accelerations are just a few examples. The A4, which debuted in 2010 alongside the original iPad, was followed by the iPhone 4. The A14 Bionic, which was launched in 2020 with the iPad Air and iPhone 12, is the 11th generation. But also, for the first round of Apple Silicon Macs, the MacBook Air, 2-port MacBook Pro, and newly resilvered Mac Mini, the M1 was launched only a month later. Now it's time for the fruit-flavored colored iMacs for beginners. Also make sure to write your thoughts in the comment section. Architecture extensions. And there's the matter of extensions. Extensions to the features. Apple began with the A5X in 2012 for the first Retina iPad. Usually, they've done so by rising the number of compute engines, adding more computing modules, such as additional CPU and GPU cores. Increasing the memory bandwidth is a good idea this type of thing. But Apple has not iterated those year after year. There was no A7X, A11X, or A13X to be found. There hasn't been any A14X either. Technically, there has. Apple, on the other hand, gave it the M1 moniker. That's what Apple did with the A12 and the A12X in 2018 as well. But like I said, Apple sometimes does wait longer, sometimes even skips entire generations. The A14 uses the same silicon generation and architecture. The CPU and GPU cores are identical. It just adds two more high-performance cores and four more GPU cores. The A12X had the same generation and architecture as the A12, but it had two more high-performance cores and four more GPU cores. Apple has also added a couple of Thunderbolt controllers to the M1, as well as some additional IP for hypervisor and x86 translation. Aside from that, it's the same Apple strategy as it's been for years. Higher generations from A12 to A13 to A14, and broader feature sets from A12X and A12Z to A14 and M1. For small thermal envelopes like the iPhone, less cores means lower power draw. For larger thermal envelopes like the iPad Pro and now the Mac, more cores mean higher power draw. What does this mean in terms of M1X or M2? We could see this new M2 MacBook this fall. That would give us a few months in between the release of the M1X chip and the M2 chip. M1X and M2 function. So if Apple follows the pattern, and Apple follows the pattern until they don't, which happens surprisingly sometimes right after I make a video. But don't worry, I'm not taking it personally. I just want to make sure you have the most up-to-date details at all times. Anyway, M1X will be a continuation of the current 11th generation architecture if Apple follows the trend. The M1 is being extended once again. So instead of 8 CPU cores and 8 GPU cores, it could have 12, 16, 32, 64, or even more at some point, along with up to 32, 64 gigabytes of RAM and 4 or more Thunderbolt controllers for example. As a result, single-core performance is likely to be similar, and I say possibly, because Apple could always experiment with frequencies on higher-end machines. The ultra-low power ones can have to give up some frequency in exchange for a long battery life. The higher-end, on the other hand, can have more battery or simply be able to prioritize frequency. But yeah, core for core, it's the same. Simply put, there are a lot of more cores, much much more. M2, on the other hand, will be the next wave of Apple Silicon, the 12th generation of the family, along with the A15, which is expected to debut in the iPhone 12s this fall. And as a result, we'll most likely see the same kind of single-core changes we've seen in recent years, around 20% for the CPU, and maybe more for the GPU if Apple drives them hard. And that might come from the process changes like moving from a 5 nanometer to a 5P, 5 plus process. Maybe if they implement and get something out of the latest ARM V9 instruction set, and then whatever architectural optimizations and improvements they already have on the roadmaps, like the stuff that's given them those single-core boosts year after year for the last few years. Conclusion 
Might Apple change the name of the M1X to the M2 to make it sound more premium in marketing for those higher-end Macs? Yes, of course, Apple once again follows trends until they don't. Overall, we would prefer the M1X over the Apple M2, since we think it's better fitting. What do you think about the M1X and the M2? Which one is better? Let us know in the comment section. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure you'll love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video.